Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, welcome to, to today's webinar uh, of understanding the IPA accreditation framework. Uh, my name is uh, Chris Twajirimana. I'm the quality and development manager and I will be your moderator for today's webinar. And uh, on the panel, we have uh, CPA Claude Kajungu, who is uh, our principal examiner. We also have uh, Strato Nyirindekwe, who is also um, the principal examiner at ICPA. We have uh, a Marie Teacher Well, who is the finance manager. We have also our director for professional development services, uh, that is uh, CPA Sande Carissa. So, um, today's uh, webinar for the accreditation framework, it is, it's about the accreditation framework which has been approved and uh, published of recently. Um, we shall see uh, uh, my colleague uh, CPA Rod Kajung will be able to take you through, uh, tell you about its scope, um, uh, who is going to be accredited, uh, but maybe to break the ice that will include uh, the tuition providers, exam uh, examination centers, training staff, and um, we shall also be able to explain to you about its objectives, but uh, maybe uh, to, to, to give you some heads up that will include the standardization and the quality assurance of um, the tuition provided for the, in regard to the ICPA qualification. And uh, the, the bottom line will be um, to improve the, the pass rates of uh, the, the students. So today's webinar uh, timelines will be, uh, we started at uh, exactly at 11 a.m. Uh, soon I'm just going to hand over to CPA Claude Kajungu who will just take you through the presentation uh, in regard to the accreditation framework. Uh, he will use about 25 to 30 minutes uh, for the presentation. Then later on we shall enter into a um, uh, question and answer session. Then uh, we shall maybe use uh, just a few minutes, like five to the closing remarks. So I'm inviting you to use the question and answer um, box that is uh, here at the bottom. Okay, it might be at the bottom or at the top of uh, this webinar, but you can be able to see it. So you can just click there, then um, ask your question, then we shall be able to read it uh, and uh, get it answered by our panelists. Um, the webinar is also being uh, uh, broadcasted live on Facebook. Uh, share it with your friends and encourage them also to follow it. And uh, without further ado, let me invite my colleague CPA Kajun to take you through. Thank you. Kazum, you need to unmute yourself. Hello. Thank you, Chris. Hope you're hearing me now. Yeah, it's all good. Yeah, good morning to everyone. I'm by name of Sipi Kafun Klops. I'm the principal examiner at ICPAR and I'll be your main speaker for today's webinar. Specifically, we shall be looking at a summary of the accreditation framework, uh, which, is, which was recently launched by the Institute to make sure that the quality provision is a little bit regulated and, and, and the bottom, as my colleague said, is the improvement of the uh, quality, quality pass rates. Now, I'll be going through some of the slides, but hope at the end of it all, you'll be able to have your questions answered through uh, questions and answers. Yeah. Yeah, ideally, uh, the framework, uh, as some of you saw, I shared the framework uh, sometimes back so that you can also go through it before we even take you through. It has some little bit of the topics 
or chapters that we shall be looking at. Uh, but specifically, we shall start with the, uh, the rationale or the reason why we came up with this accreditation framework. So the main focus is the evaluation of student training providers. And when we talk of training providers, we talk of the training centers and, and the training staff or the tutors. Uh, we shall be, maybe we shall be using different terminologies as far as what we are used of, because we've been using training pro providers or the tuition providers, but now we shall be referring it to training providers as training, I mean the tuition providers, training providers, and then the training staff, uh, what we call the tutors today or the lecturers, as some of you call. Uh, so training providers, uh, to make sure that training providers meet necessary quality requirements, that is the main objective. And then we shall also give you the accreditation checklist for the radio safe reviews. And then, uh, of course, for us to come up with the, this accreditation framework, we had some objectives that we need to achieve. And some of them are quality assurance and standardization. I remember when we put up, when we talk of checklists, I mean, they, everyone will be applying the same standards so that when a student goes to one training provider, he gets the same tuition as someone who has gone to another training provision. Then continue improvement. On top of this, the institute will be carrying out the inspections. And after every inspection, we shall also be issuing continue improvement letters, uh, issuing out the issues. So telling the training provider the issue they need to improve on, which will also help themselves to improve. Then consistency and alignment, since we're using the same checklists, that means we shall be having consistency across all the tuition providers or the training providers. And then of course the confidence in the training providers, uh, as far as the public is concerned, when you have something that is related, of course the confidence of the public, the confidence of the students, and even the confidence of the institute will be high. And then of course, we're also trying to safeguard public interests. We're trying to eliminate these people who have been providing tuition, but they don't have what it takes to provide the tuition. So in doing this, we shall be safeguarding the public interests by, I mean, the electing students, you need to go this, you need to go there, so that you don't need to go this one, this, this person is not accredited. So, of course, also increase recognition. Uh, remember, we shall, uh, as a training provider, we shall be giving you the certificates, which will also help you to be recognized in other activities that you've been doing. Of course, also the international recognition, when you give a certificate, as uh, some of you, you have other activities that you do that require, uh, you, you know, uh, the certificates to have worked with another institution. So when you have our certificate, you are able also to work with another one without difficulties. Of course, also the comparability. Yeah. You know, when we have the same principles, same guidance, same standards, you are able to compare at different institutions. Those are some of the objectives of the application framework. Of course, uh, the benefits cuts across all the first public training institutions, students, uh, to, of course, also the students and others. So, you know, the training institutions include increased quality of tuition and visibility. Of course, when we work together, we shall also help you to be visible. We shall be publishing on our website so that everyone is able to see that this training pro provider is updated and, 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 you know, the quality of the tuition. And then to the public, increased assurance of the compliance of required standards. Because of course, as we are to you, the public is assured that this person meets the minimum required standards as far as the tuition provision is concerned. Also the students, mobility of students across various accredited tuitions. Of course, when I'm maybe I haven't talked about the categories, but when a student wants to switch one training provider to another one, of course, you need to know that maybe I'm switching from this tuition provider to this one, 
are they on the same level or um, moving somewhere that to someone who, is, who does not meet the criteria? So it also allows the mobility of the students to move across all the tuition providers. Uh, and then, of course, we have the principles that underline this accreditation framework. One is the customer centricity. Of course, we shall, everything we do, we do it for the customers. So your concerns are our priorities. Confidentiality, everything we shall be doing, of course, will be confidential. As you know, we, we also adhere to the fundamental principles of accountants. So confidentiality is one of them. So we need to, of course, collaboration. We shall be working together. This is not a one man race. It's to improve ourselves. We must gain from it. It's a win-win. So we have to collaborate there. Of course, technology will be the center of the business we're doing in the accreditation. Everything will be facilitated by the technology. And then professionalism, that's what we want to put at the forefront. And then consideration, of course. Um, then you allow me to take you through the categories of the training providers or tuition providers or tuition centers. We probably have three uh, categories uh, into the first one is bronze, the second one is silver, and the third one is gold. Uh, now, after that, uh, remember, maybe I didn't tell you the scope, we shall be accrediting training providers, examination centers, and the training staff. Now, we also need to accredit examination centers uh, to make sure that when a student goes for an examination, he goes to a place that favors, that is conducive enough for him or her to do the exam well. So we shall also accredit the examination centers. We shall put in place the standards so that the, what we call examination center meets the standards for someone to sit his or her exam. And then we shall also have the accreditation of the tutors or the training staff which will be accredited into three categories, assistant trainer, and then certified trainer, and then senior certified trainer. We shall look at the details and what it entails or what it takes for one to be a different category. Uh, and then we shall also look at the core requirements that cuts across all the categories, whether you're in blue and silver or gold, you need to have uh, these core requirements. The first one being legal entity. For you to be a training provider, you need to be a legal entity. You need to have the legal personality. You need to have a registered office somewhere. And I know this is not a challenge because you cannot, you cannot also request for, to be a training provider when you don't have a registered office. And then the second one will be leadership or governance, which you shall be looking at how, how do you earn for your administrative staff, what is the apex uh, governance level. And then we also want people who are serious in the business, who have the sustainability, and that's why we shall be requesting you to give us your strategic plan, or business plan, or marketing plan, whether you are starting now or in existence, you need to prove to us that you have what it takes for you to do this business of tuition provision. Of course, we, should, we also look at the legal compliance. Are you compliant with other regulatory bodies? Uh, for instance, if you're a university, uh, have you been compliant with HEC, or with the Ministry of Education, with tax authorities, and whatever? Of course, when you have legal issues with other regulatory authorities, uh, it doesn't give us the guarantee that you will be able to provide the uh, tuition that we, we need. And then we also have to show us how you manage your students or what we call student management. And that means rules governing conduct of students, student record, fee structure, reading facilities, like library, whether electronic or physical and whatever. And then we straight go to the categories specifically. And the first one is bronze, which is the first category for the people who are just starting or who have been in existence but do not qualify for the upper categories. Uh, and then we shall, of course, each category has its own benefits. 
uh, like a listing in the institution provider directory, we shall be issuing you, like we shall be putting you on the website uh, so that whoever logs into our website is able to see who is accredited. And then certificate of approval uh, with a blown institution provider logo. We shall, of course, be allocating you logos uh, that reflects your category. Then access to self-assessment tools. We shall be giving you the self-assessment tools so that before we even come to assess you, you can be able, you can be able to assess yourself. And that's how uh, a tuition provider or a training staff is able to improve before we even come in, because you need to first do uh, that. Uh, and then we also go to specific requirements for the bronze category. You must be having a physical location where you shall be conducting your tuition, and then adequate facilities for at least two classrooms. Because since this is the, 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 the first category, we don't need to say maybe you need 20 classrooms because you have to start small for you to grow. So we understand at least two classrooms are enough for you to start at bronze level. And then, of course, student enrollment of at least 10 students, uh, whether in CAT or in CPA, at least two qualified trainers at assistant level. We shall also look at the different levels of the training staff or the tutors. And then, of course, you are able to prove to us that you'll be able to maintain records of student enrollment, uh, dropout, completion, pass rates for the at least three years, if you've been in existence. But if you've not been in existence, and then this does not concern you. But we know that people will be, uh, who will apply to be blondes who have been in existence because maybe they've not meet the criteria of the upper categories. And that's why we request them to give us at least the passwords of at least three years. And then the second category is the silver. Uh, it is also open to those commercial operations with higher, maybe these people are the requirements, they have the equipment, they have what it takes to jump bronze category and then go directly to silver. And then, of course, to those who have been in existence but do not qualify to be at the gold level. Um, and then the benefits for the silver listing the partition provided electorally at the website, of course, a certificate of, and an approved silver status logo access to the ICPAL student examination research service, and then access to ICPAL online education resources. Of course, we shall be providing the online resources on our website. And this, the CDIVA tuition provider will be able to access these resources. And then we shall also have access to the safe assessment tools to support the institution transition to the gold status. Of course, when, even if you start at the gold, at, at the blonde level, you need to improve yourself and you go higher, like you go to the Siliva or you aim to go to the gold. So for you to be able to transit from one category to another, you need at least to assess yourself and these assessment tools will enable you to do that. And then specific requirements for Siliva, at least two classroom size, those at least a class that can have, can, can accommodate 50 students, Student enrollment of 50 or more, at least 50% of tutors on certified trainer level, and must have at least tutors on full time basis. And then, of course, the student, the tutor student ratio of a maximum of 1 to 30. So, when you have like more than 30 students, you need to divide that class into two classes. So, that the reason why we're doing this is to make sure that whoever attends class gets the quality that he wants. And we believe when you have 50 or 100 students with one lecturer, the quality is not that much. And that's why we just put a, a ratio. And then the academic head must be a member of ICPA or any of any recognized accountants board, the artist, officiate, and accredited trainer. So the, that is maybe the head of the department for professional courses or the head of the school or the head of the faculty, he must be an ICPAN member of, or a member of any organization. And then, of course, you must prove to us that you have the student 
uh, conference policy and procedures so that you can be able to handle uh, those issues as they pop up. Um, then we shall also go to the third and the last category, which is code. This is the third and the final level of decision providers who may train both the ICPA approved courses on CP and CAT qualifications. Now, it is a progression step that a tuition provider can apply for and be admitted to having been to a, a, at a silver level status for at least two examination centers, cycles for the ICPA approved courses. Now, for you to be at this level, you need to prove to us that you are up to the status because we don't just give it to someone. You need to, you know, to prove to us for real that you deserve God. And the requirements, of course, are a little bit advanced as far as when you compare with other categories. Let's look at the benefits. Uh, access to it by market information package. This is unlike uh, the previous categories. Then you have direct access to the principal examiner guidance through question and answers forum, where you ask the principal examiner or whichever question you feel like asking. Uh, and this is a privilege that the rest of the categories do not have. And then you also have access to ICPA tutor exam review panel. And then you have invitation to the ICPA training providers conference, advertising and marketing opportunities with ICPA and their partners access to invitation to regional and international conferences as partners with ICPAR. So you, as you can see, the, B, the benefits are quite anonymous. When you apply for this, you also quite assured that you are at a level where you are uh, happy to be. And then we also recognize, uh, most especially uh, recently when the coronavirus showed us that uh, everything can be done online. So we shall, we shall also be having open stroke distance learning providers. Whoever uh, needs to have that, we shall also be able to accredit and give you the license to operate as open distance learning provider. As long as you fulfill the requirements that are specified, you are able to do it. Um, and, then, and some of the uh, course requirements, uh, we have fulfilling all the core requirements for it. Of course, when you apply for open or distance learning providers, you can also be categorized in, in, in the previous three categories. You can either apply to be an online or open or distance learning provider at bronze, silver, or gold. So that means for you to be able to request for open or distance learning provider, you must have met the criterias that have been specified, uh, even those that are doing physical classes. Uh, of course, fulfillment of requirements in the applied category, if you are applying for bronze or silver or gold, you must fulfill the requirements. Uh, demonstrate on develop interactive learning materials. They shall also demonstrate the plan in place for continued assessment of students or learners, demonstrate capacity for faculty or students or training staff and libraries by the category in which they seek to be affected to. And of course, demonstrate support for students reserving the examination. Uh, we, shall, we, shall, we shall also accredit examination centers because we clearly understand that examinations, examination is at the cornerstone of the profession since it's the one uh, that proves that you, you are capable or you are skilled enough to do something. So we are trying to make sure that we have a conducive environment for someone to do the exam. Not like we go to a place where you reach and then whatever you have in mind and then it pops out. Uh, of course, this one will also help us to make sure that uh, we, we maintain the integrity that the examination uh, requires. Um, we shall also have different categories of examination centers. The first one being entering status, and the, the final one being the full status. The first one, uh, we, whoever applies to be an examination center will have to first prove to us that he has what it takes to be an examination center. And we shall first uh, test it. In other words, when you apply, 
we shall give you an interview. And then we give you like two at least examination sittings to make sure that you have whatever it takes. And then after that, we can assess and give you the full status of the application. Uh, there are some criteria. Of course, we have uh, you have enough seats, and, and your examination center has the capacity to accommodate at least 50 students. It must be the owner or the CSA of the premises for not less than two years. Location free from noise and other disturbances. Before that is the conducive environment I was trying to talk about. Of course, you have the enough capacity to also accommodate students who are reading, who are not in examinations, and those who are waiting for the examinations. Of course, we have also secure room where we shall be keeping our exams, and, and, and at least we have peace of mind where these exams are kept uh, safely. And then, of course, the security of the exams. And then from there, we shall also accredit the training staff or the tutors. Uh, we have different categories. We have assistant trainer who must accord at least a qualification C2 or CPA profession or a diploma or degree in related field. And then we shall also have the second category, which is certified trainer. For you to be a certified trainer, we shall organize what we call training of trainers, where we shall certify the trainers because that's what makes it different from the first one. Uh, the first one does not need to have a, cert a certificate of TOT or the training of trainers. But the second one, you must have a certificate of completion of training of trainers. And then of course, for that is a CA2 or a CPA, uh, be a member in, of ICPAD in good standing, or other professionals be a member of local or international respective professional body if you do have. And of course, experience of at least two years training professional courses. And then the last category is senior certified trainer. Who must be a certified trainer? Because you cannot be a, a senior certified trainer when you are not a certified trainer. So you must be a certified trainer for you to apply to be a senior certified trainer. And then you, you must be a member of ICPAR or any other organization or accountants organization in good standing. And of course, expense of five years or more in training professional courses. Um, and then we also want to take you through the accreditation review process. We shall be receiving your documents and then your documents are reviewed. And then where necessary meetings and field visits will occur. And then of course, oral interviews where we, we feel we need to, we shall also call out oral interviews and field visits. Uh, after doing field visits, we shall be offering interim reports. Uh, after oral interviews and or site visits, an interim report shall be prepared detailing areas of confirmance, the criteria and the exceptions noted. Uh, and then after that, we shall also give you a report on granting accreditation. Now, before we grant your accreditation, we must prove, we must show you on which basis uh, we based on while granting you the accreditation or rejecting your accreditation. Now, this report will be issued by the accreditation committee, which of course uh, will be formed uh, at a later date or at the end of the presentation which I'll give you the details of how the accreditation committee will be composed of or comprised of. Uh, and then we shall also offer what we call conditional accreditation. In case, in this case, the applicant will be given the uh, accreditation, but with condition to fulfill. For example, if we have some condition that we are not, uh, that you are not meeting all the requirements, but we are in line to meet all of them, we shall give you conditional accreditation so that you can meet all those requirements. For those of you who are in higher learning education, you know what it means to be given a conditional accreditation. The conditions will be clear and time bound and the applicant will file reports and evidence demonstrating compliance. And then after that, the accreditation committee will determine whether to grant you the 
approve accreditation or reject your accreditation. Uh, as I, as Aria said, uh, depending on the requirements that will be required and what you submit, your accreditation can be rejected. And and, and clear uh, report on why your accreditation has been rejected will be given to you. Uh, of course, the inspection, we shall also be carrying out the inspections. Uh, who, the training providers who are at the bronze level will have a maximum of three times a year. I mean, being, they'll be inspected three times a year, maximum. Uh, or, but remember, the institute, depending on the conditions, can decide to carry out more or less. And then those who are at silver level, maximum of two years, of twice, I mean twice a year, and then gold once every two years. Because at this level, uh, you, we know that at least you are somewhere and, and we don't, we trust you, you are doing what it takes. And then of course, examination centers once every year. Uh, the accreditation, the inspection criteria are clear, uh, per category, the pass rates, the independent feedback, where the institute deems necessary, we shall also be using the student feedbacks where we shall be issuing, uh, the, we shall be requesting the students to give us the feedbacks about the tuition provider or the training staff and whatever. Uh, and then of course the inspection implications. Inspection of the training institution may result in one or more of the following consequences. Later of continued improvement, of course, we shall, when we see that you need to improve somewhere, we shall give you a letter of continued improvement. Notes of non-conformity, if we see that you are not compliant, we give you notes of non-conformity. Notes of closure or consideration, where your accreditation will be withdrawn from you. Uh, we shall also, of course, uh, accredit foreign training providers in Rwanda, who shall also go through the same process as the area categories we said, uh, and then we shall also uh, have the training provider that will be operating outside Rwanda. We shall also have that category. Uh, and then of course, this is where I'm, I know most of you will be interested, most especially those who went through the application framework. Uh, of course, for us to be able to do Whatever we've said, the inspection, the field visits, we need uh, we need money to to do to do so. Because uh, remember, uh, you cannot do a field visit when you are seated in the office. So the rates that are applied here are specifically to enable the institute to call out the duties that are specifically uh, mentioned in the accreditation framework. Now, depending on the category you'll be applying to be placed on, you'll be paying different rates. Like for example, a bronze will be required to pay one-time application fee 50,000 Rwandan francs. And then a, at the end of year, uh, each training provider will be required to file annual renewals with an annual fee of 50,000 or so. And then silver 100,000, an annual of 100,000, gold 200,000, and the annual uh, renewal of 200,000. And then also the trainers will be required to pay a certain fee to enable us to accredit them and inspect them. The assistant trainer will be required to pay 50,000 as one time application. And then at the end of the year, as they're filing their uh, annual renewals, they also pay 50,000. And then certified trainer, 75, and senior certified trainer, uh, 100,000. Uh, as earlier talked, of course, all this will be done by a committee. And this committee will be composed of a representative of Education Commission, which is the education that is in charge of education development services and, and you know, coming up with the policies and whatever. And then we shall, we shall also be having a representative for training providers. Uh, training providers will elect among themselves a representative uh, to be on the accreditation committee to make sure that whatever we do, we are fair enough 
And then, of course, three secretariat members appointed by the governing council. We elect among themselves a chairperson and a secretary of the committee. Uh, I think with that, uh, I really appreciate your time. Uh, I will now hand over to the moderator to see if there are some questions and then we go through the questions, of course. Um, uh, thank you so much, our facilitator, CPA uh, Claude Kajung. Uh, indeed, we have uh, so many questions here. Uh, some were straightforward. I'll just go through them, and I can see that uh, in the chat box, uh, we were able to, you know, to respond to a few questions that were uh, straightforward. Um, so uh, I will start with uh, the first question was coming from a uh, regist who was uh, requesting for this where he can find uh, the soft copy. Uh, for the accreditation uh, framework. I think it's been uh, shared in the chat box. Uh, it's on the website, but uh, later on we shall actually even send it to all participants uh, together with a um, presentation that were requested by also the, the, the current presentation being used in this webinar that uh, uh, was requested by uh, uh, different um, attendees. So, um, so the next question was coming from uh, Mr. Selassius. He asked, why did you decide to have uh, various categories of trainers? I think he's talking about uh, the training staff. And uh, he asking, he's asking us to whether it won't bring any issues with the trainees, meaning the students. Maybe you can just take up that one first. OK, thank you, Chris. Uh, I think we are not the first one who have done this. and, and uh, we can even benchmark to what is happening at the higher learning institutions. When you look at the higher learning institutions, we have what we call assist tutorial, I mean, tutorial, tutorial assistants. We have assistant lecturers, we have lecturers, we have senior lecturers, we have associate professors, and we have professors. Now, uh, as, as we said, of course, each category of the training provider will have a specified number training staff at a particular level, make sure that even those ones that are at a lower level, for example, assistant trainers, have the people who are senior enough to mentor them so that they provide the quality of the tuition that we need. Same applies to what HEC does, because whoever is taught by assistant lecturer is same as someone who has been taught by a lecturer or a senior lecturer. So this one, we shall make sure that it will not compromise the quality of course. But at the same time, people cannot be at the same level. Because if we say we are also, we are only allowing people with experience of five years, where will you get the experience? You, you will not get experience from anywhere. You need to get experience. But at the same time, you need to be mentored by these seniors. For example, if someone is at the gold level, he's required to have a particular number of senior certified trainers who will be in a position to mentor the certified and assistant trainers to make sure that as they grow into their profession, they are able to provide the quality of the tuition that we receive. So it will not compromise the quality. Um, okay, thank you. And uh, I think uh, I also uh, briefly answered that question mentioning that uh, for the trainees they won't know who is uh, you know coming to class whether that is um, uh, a certified trainer or a senior trainer so that is, that will be to um, the training providers institution maybe to know but now that will also uh, affect the categories on which uh, they are accredited. Uh, the next um, question came from uh, Elijah he asked uh, different categories. He said which one is lowest and which one is highest. Maybe he was referring to both uh, training providers or uh, training staff. You can maybe just kind of do a, like... Um, a, Thank a you, Regius. Uh, the lowest category as far as training provider is concerned is the bronze, the mid one is silver, and the highest one is the gold. And, and as Aria saw, as you go up, of course, the criteria also go up. You, you have to meet different criteria for you to be at a particular level. So when you are at the gold, gold is the highest, 
and, and, and it's the one that we presume is the best. When it comes to training staff, the lowest is assistant trainer and the highest is the senior certified trainer. And of course, also the criteria are different. Yeah, that's um, it. The same question was also asked by uh, Dr. Eric from uh, Kivogora. So uh, the answer you've given answers uh, both of uh, their questions. Um, so we have another question from Serasius. He's asking if a training staff is a member of, of ACCA, can it be an added advantage? Maybe before you take, you, you take on that, um, he, might, he might have asked this question before uh, you had touched uh, on it in your presentation, but uh, at a level of the certified trainer and senior certified trainer, um, a training staff is required to be uh, a member of VICPA in good standing. Maybe you can uh, shed uh, more clarity on that. Yeah, they, they are required to be members of VICPA and specifically in good standing. But at the same time, we also work with our fellow POS, professional, professional accountants organizations. So if someone has a, is a member of another uh, professional organization, there is no problem. But actually where we are specific and, and, and it's on the training, the, the training of trainers and then the conferences, for you to be able to file your renewals, you'll be, you, you, have, you have to prove to us that you have attended a different trainings or seminars or the, and, and whatever. And these trainings must be organized by ICPAC. But when you're a member of SCCA, at a certain level, you'll be required to be a member of ICPAC. But there are some levels where you are not required to be a member of ICPAC. For example, if, if you want to be a senior certified trainer, as you saw, you must be a member of ICPAC. Okay. Um... Maybe to compliment you also on that uh, uh, in regard to the membership, um, if you are a member of ACCA, you can as well apply to be a member of ICPA. So yeah. that is very straightforward, provided that you fulfill all the requirements, but uh, all the ACCA members who want to apply for the ICPA membership, they go through the same process of uh, membership application and they get approved by the governing council. Um, in this okay. case, to compliment or not, could not have said, he not only applied to, to train or tuition provide, also for train, tr training providers to be licensed by other professional organization. It is added advantage because you have the minimum requirement to have classes, to have training staff, all that must be put into consideration by ICPAD during providing accreditation to training providers. Thank you. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah, thanks you Strato for your input. Um, the next question came from uh, CPA Otieno. Uh, I think his question was relating to the CPD. Uh, it's not related maybe 100% to this uh, current webinar, but we can also respond to him. He asked us to whether, um, the question was, can professional firms provide short-term uh, CPD, continuous professional development? Can this be accredited? Uh, he was referring to the CPD um, program for the members. I think uh, currently for, uh, for our um, CPD policy, um, it allows the uh, audit firms to, to provide the CPDs, but provided that they have done it uh, in collaboration with uh, ICPA. Um, so we can do a collaboration. Maybe we, 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 we offer a training uh, together, or maybe before you start it, maybe you just come to us and we, we discuss, we look at, um, we look at uh, the content, because uh, at the end of the day, the, the bottom line will be how many CPD hours not now will we, will we award to that uh, CPD training. So. We discuss about it, we agree before the training, then, uh, you know, uh, as always, um, the audit, audit firms can, can, can go ahead and uh, do the CPD uh, trainings. So 
the next question came from also Selassius. He, he asked as to whether the TOT to be organized uh, for the accreditation of uh, training, uh, training staff, is it different from the one which took place earlier this year? Rod, you can take up that question. Mm. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, it is because the objectives are different. The objectives of the previous one were to specifically for CAT. But here, we are looking at the CAT and CPA, the, teach, the teaching methodology, as far as provision of crucial, I mean, to the CPA and CAT. But the previous TOT was organized specifically for CAT, teaching of CAT. Now, that means if we, we, we take that as same as this one, you want to be accredited to train CAT and you want to train people who are able to train in both qualifications. So this one would be specific for CP and CAT. And the other one was, was specific. Thank you, Chris. Um, uh, there is um I don't know whether the, the noise is coming from Aline. Maybe you can uh unmute your, your mic. Okay. Uh, maybe please before you proceed, let me add on uh to shed more light on what I said. We are organizing a training of trainers. So uh, you, must, you might be having, I mean, the questions of, now we haven't been certified, are we not allowed to, to, to apply for accreditation? Soon we'll be giving you emails of uh, when and how the TOT will be organized uh, to certify you so that you can continue with the process of requesting for an accreditation. Uh, okay, Claude. Uh, thank you. Um, so the next question came from uh, uh, Wumbari. Uh, he asked uh, for a clarification saying, um, can an institution apply to any level or they, had to start, they have to start with bronze? Uh, depending on, on, on the criteria, you can, you can start on gold or silver or bronze. It depends on the, on, I mean, on the criteria. When you meet the criteria for you to be a gold training provider, you can apply for gold training provider. If you qualify for silver, then you can apply for silver. Yeah, so it would depend whether you fulfill the criteria of that particular category you're applying for. Yeah, I think that is clear. Um, so we continue to thank our audience that have um, asked uh, really many questions for clarification. We appreciate. Um, so we can continue. I can see that we still have uh, around 12 minutes uh, on this webinar. Uh, the next question came from uh, Jean-Claude. Uh, he asked when the accreditation for tutors shall start being a condition. We, we are saying this accreditation was launched sometimes back and it will be effective next sitting or next semester. That is when you are starting training, you must be in position to have a, obtained your accreditation. I think it's clear. Okay. Um, let me look at uh, other questions that were uh, asked. Uh, I have one here from uh, CPA Preston. He's uh, basically giving an example of ACC, saying uh, ACC accredits uh, the trainers basically for free. Can it also benchmark on this? Actually, the trainers are of the benefit of the, to the institute, and in his view, the institute should motivate the trainers by giving them, by giving them uh, a free accreditation. So what's your take on uh, CPA Preston, uh, Preston's view? Yeah, it's quite tricky. Uh, there are two independent institutions that work differently. Uh, 
I'm not so sure how SCCF does it, but remember we said we shall be carrying out inspections and feed this. And these inspections and feed this uh, cannot be done without the facilitation of the, I mean, the money. So uh, same applies to when we talk of, uh, we charge different rates. Why, 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 it's, it's as if someone asks you, why does SCCA charge $150 for one paper and then you charge $50? We work differently. But for us, our main intention and our main objective is to make sure that when we start this thing, we do it to our best. And remember, uh, when you are aiming high, you have to incur some costs. So those costs are for us to make sure that you provide the best tuition and we also produce the best accountant. That is our main objective. Okay. Uh, let's move to the next question that was uh, asked by Samuel Nzira uh, Vatinya. So he asked, uh, what measures did you put in place to control the extent to which the training providers comply with the requirements stated? Thank you. Of course, I, I, I think I've already answered that because I said we shall be doing fit this, we shall be inspecting. Of course, when we're inspecting, we shall be following the checklists that we will provide them. So we shall be doing regular inspections to make sure that uh, what they're supposed to be doing is what they're doing. And, and, and we say that after every inspection, we'll be issuing reports. And these reports may be continued improvement or non compliance or closure or cancellation of application and whatever. So we shall make sure that whatever uh, that is in this application framework is followed by doing uh, inspection, field works, and whatever. Okay, uh, thanks. Um, I can see that we have so many questions here, but we shall try to answer as many as possible. Uh, the next is from uh, Jambot Skokaringa Nile. He started off by uh, uh, thanking uh, the presenter, and I uh, stated that he has a, a concern. He says that once you're a member, an ICPA member paying the membership fee, so he's referring to the CPO CAT member. So he's, yeah. the question, why should he pay the application fee for being a, tra um, a training staff, I think. Yet he's a member. So in his view, he says, I could enjoy the benefits of membership. And uh, another question to that um, extent, he says, uh, well, will the application fees be refundable when the application is re rejected? So you can take on those two from uh, Karinga Nili. Okay, thank you. I think people are trying to mix two things. Uh, when it comes to membership, membership fees facilitate, uh, facilitate your membership part. And here we are talking of another business of training. I mean, if, if you are coming to inspect you as a trainer, we shall not come to, to inspect you as a member. And when someone comes to inspect you as a member, he I mean, we shall not also say that we're expecting you as a trainer because we don't know who is a trainer, we don't know who is a trainer. And at the same time, there are two different services. It's as if you're requesting two different services from one service provider and say, say I'm going to pay one service fee, yet we're requesting two service fees from that, from that service provider. Second, uh, when it comes to fees, we made sure that the accreditation framework is very specific and clear so that before you even apply, you have what it takes to minimize the costs. I mean, to minimize, you know, even delaying to accredit you. But at the same time, when your accreditation uh, is rejected and you cannot proceed to request, I mean, you cannot proceed and bring uh, other uh, requirements. We, can, we shall consider and see whether you can refund your money. But at the same time, if you have some other requirements that are obtainable, 
we shall be requesting you to go and do those requirements and then we start from that uh, fee that you paid. We shall not yeah. request it to another fee. Yeah. Um, yeah, actually, on uh, what you've uh, uh, explained, I can also give uh, another example of practitioners, um, the practitioners who are licensed to, 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 for the certification of audit, audit um, I mean, the fi audited financial statements. So them, they are members of the institute, but on the top of uh, paying the membership fees, the normal membership fees, they also pay for their licenses. So I think in that context that maybe these uh, accreditation fees will also be uh, required. Uh, I have another question here from Jambo Sko Karinga Nile. Um, uh, let me just see. No, no, actually it's from Jean-Pierre Mujenzi. So he's asking us to whether the fees for trainers, whether they will be paid on an annual basis or whether they will be paid once. And um, will the training institution pay for all the trainers? Uh, thank you. Uh, we shall have one time application fee for you to be a trainer or a training provider. And then at the end of the year, you'll be required to renew your accreditation. So that means you also be paying annual renewals. There is one time application fee, and then there is annual renewal that will be paid on an annual basis. Uh, on the question of whether the training providers will, will be able to pay for, for their tutors, uh, I think that is a question that they will need to discuss with their, of course, training providers. Uh, to me, but this is to me personally, uh, I would add that the training providers would pay for the tutors, but I don't know how they will handle. This is up to the training providers and, and, the, tra and the training staff. You have to sit down and see whether you pay for yourselves or the training providers will pay uh, for you. That is the question that is found to the training providers. Yeah. Thank you so much, uh, Kazung. We are also mindful of the time. We have only three minutes remaining to this webinar. Uh, we thank so much our audience for asking too many questions. I know that uh, there are very few questions that uh, maybe were not answered. We have your contacts and we have your question. Then we shall follow up with you and uh, provide uh, uh, the answers. Uh, soon I'm just going to ask for my panelists to give their closing remarks remarks, but for me, I thank you so much for having been uh, a very active um, audience. This is at the start of the conversation on the accreditation framework. I know that uh, during the way other questions will also uh, be, uh, other questions will also be raised, but um, you know, we are here and we'll be working together to make sure that we get uh, everything right. I've seen that most of the, uh, the attendees were appreciating this idea of accreditation framework. Thank you so much, and the uh, feedback is well noted. Uh, before I give room to my uh, panelists, uh, mine, uh, uh, mine is uh, to tell you that um, a couple of things. Um, as you are aware, we are also in the process of uh, revamping our, C our CPA program. Uh, we want uh, to make it uh, a nationally relevant uh, qualification, but also which is uh, internationally uh, recognized. Um, there's an email that we'll send to specifically to this category of training providers. Um, we have been able to, to, to develop a draft competency framework, of course, which will, which will um, inspire the development of the qualification. So we want uh, your input before it is finalized. Uh, the consultation is uh, next week on Friday on, uh, on, um, at uh, 1 p.m. So we hope that we shall also or uh, see you in that um, consultation framework, consultation framework uh, meeting. And another one is that um, we have other upcoming webinars. We have members here and uh, training providers as well. Um, I can see that that one will take place uh, next week uh, on uh, 14th, and uh, another one is will take place on 17th. So we have uh, great speakers like Alex Granger and uh, uh, Dr. Av. Arvinda Sharwa, especially for Dr. Alex Granga. Most of you, you know him from uh, his great presentation during the annual training conference. 
So see you soon. Maybe I can just give a room for my fellow presenters to give their parting shots. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Chris. Mine is a word of appreciation. We automatically appreciate your time. We appreciate your efforts. We appreciate your collaboration as we are all working towards professionalization of accountants in Rwanda. Uh, of course, as Aria said, we shall be communicating to you when the TOT will be organized so that you cannot miss out to be certified. Uh, and of course, we have your contacts for any uh, communication we shall be sending to you. And please feel free to also contact us, specifically if you have any question on accreditation. Most of you have my contacts. You can contact me. I'll be giving you uh, full details of what you've not understood today. Thank you so much. Uh -huh. All right, thank you so much, uh, CPA Claude, for the wonderful presentation and for the moderator for having done a great job. I think we are almost on time. So I don't have much to say because uh, most of the things have been talked about, but I just wanted to emphasize on uh, the implementation of the accreditation framework. This is a document that requires us to uh, work together to ensure that actually walk the talk and we've started and we're not returning, we're not going back. So what it means that even the uh, training providers must also ensure that their tutors are accredited. And as part of their application process, they also need to indicate at what level do, do their uh, training uh, trainers belong to. So in order to facilitate the training providers to ensure that at least they are not embedded because uh, uh, they ha the trainers have not been accredited, then we are organizing the TOT before even we start the accreditation of the institutions that provide tuition. So uh, this is a plan for uh, this month. We are planning to do it for three days, but it's going to be virtual. So it's going to start from 29th up to 31st of this month, and it will be uh, taking around two to three hours per day for three good days. And somebody talked about the syllabus review. It was a question, but at least uh, the moderator has answered that. And another person talked about how other people can uh, become ICPAL members. For example, as lawyers, I didn't get the question quite well, but maybe they meant as a, uh, for example, a trainer, and you are training a law paper, so that does not require you to be a NICPAL member because you can only be a NICPAL member if you've done your examination or belong to another accountancy professional body in any other jurisdiction, then you can accommodate you. But if you're a lawyer, again, you can still remain in your body as a lawyer and we can treat you as such. So uh, that one shouldn't be a problem. The other thing is only to reiterate on what you're trying to do. I'm sure most of you know so you understand where the country is heading. You've talked about the national strategy for transformation. You've talked about the vision 2050 and everything. Then I understand that you've also attended the national leadership retreats where the issue of accreditation has come out strongly, especially to higher learning institutions. So what ICPAL is doing today, we are actually taking the lead, but I'm very sure even in academic qualification, the accreditation thing is coming out clear. So if you, you start to, accredit, to get accredited, I'm sure it's going to be another added advantage at your end. Without wasting too much time, I thank you again. Bye, nice weekend. Uh, thank you so much. Bye. Uh, Bye. Uh, next. Yes.